Hello class. Hello class. Uh, today's lecture is on finding the inverse of a 3 by 3. Having gone through the process of finding a 2 by 2, I believe we're equipped enough to find the inverse of a 3 by 3. And we'll be taking the same steps that we took in finding the inverse of a 2 by 2 to find the inverse of a 3 by 3. Now the first step was to find the determinant of the matrix. The second step was to find the adjoint. And then the last step will find the inverse. So if you have these two components, which is the determinants and the adjoints of a matrix, then you can find the inverse. All right, so if we're given a matrix, a three by three matrix, which is A equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and we are to find the determinant of this matrix, the first thing that we need to do is to pick a row or a column of our choice. Now, the row of the column that you're choosing should have the maximum number of zeros so that your work will be simplified. That is a thumbs up. If you choose any row or any column that has the maximum number of row, you're bound to do less work than somebody who chooses a row or a column that has the least, the least number of zeros in it. All right. Now, since all these are variables, we can choose um, none of these rows or columns here have zeros in it. So let's pick row one as our preferred row. Now, after we pick that row or the column, there's a sign conversion that needs to be applied. We start from plus up to the last component. So a plus and it alternates to a minus, then a plus then it alternates to a minus and to the last component. So if since we are picking row one as our preferred row, the sign conversion only applies to that preferred row. So we have a plus, minus, then the plus. Alright, so let's write down the components of our preferred row, which is minus plus A, minus B, then plus C. Okay, so we locate the first component which is a then we cross out the row and the column in which that component can be found then find the determinant of the remaining my no, sorry remaining minor matrix two by two minor matrix which is e f h i then we move on to the second component which is plus b sorry, minus B, and we'll cross out the row and the column in which we can locate B and find the determinant of the 2 by 2 minor matrix, which is D, F, G, I. Then we do the same for the last component, which is C, cross out the row and the column in which C can be found and find the determinant of the remaining minor matrix, which is D, E, G, H. Now we know how to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, which is the product of the leading diagonal minus the product of the other diagonal. So finding the determinant of this matrix shouldn't be that hard. So the absolute value of A, which is the determinant of A equal to plus A, which is the coefficient of this 2 by 2 matrix, times E I minus F H. Then we move on to the second component, which is minus B into the product of the leading diagonal minus the product of the other diagonal. So we have D I minus F G, then plus C into the product of the leading diagonal minus the product of the other diagonal which is d h minus g e all right now since all these are variables we cannot find the answer for it now however if these numbers were real numbers or complex numbers then we can compute the determinant of this matrix and if we get a zero then it means that the inverse for this matrix a does not exist if the determinant of a matrix is equal to zero, then it means the inverse does not exist. And such a matrix is said to be non-invertible or singular. All right. However, if the determinant is any integer aside zero, then it means that inverse exists. 
and such a matrix is said to be invertible or non singular okay so with that being said let's look at some examples of three by three matrices and then we'll try and compute its determinant okay <music>